Uh, we've got a hell of a guest this week, but first, we need to go ahead and send our condolences to the entire Rhodes family, and uh, we've talked about it a lot here on the show in the previous weeks, uh, what a big mentor Dusty was to Rick, and uh, you even kicked around the idea of being rambling Ricky Rhodes at one point, and what a big deal he was in your career and an influence on your life, and I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking with you about the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Well, it's, you know, I'm overwhelmed right now, obviously. Um, and thank God that I got to see him uh, two days before he passed and uh, spent some time. And we were just our old selves. He was he was mad that I was getting to go see LeBron James. <laughs> right. And I was, you know, we just antagonized each other. We, had, we have our whole lives. and But I, I, I had noticed a drastic weight loss, and I was with Michelle, and... Uh, um, at WrestleMania, and I was talking to her, and they just, you know, she wouldn't, she wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't admit that Dusty was sick, but I knew that he was. And of course, I found out since uh, that he had been sick for a while. But um, just close to the family forever. I mean, I was when in 1972, Dusty took me to Texas. Vern sent me to Japan with those guys, and I was at his, uh, Dustin and. Uh, and Dustin and Kristen, his two oldest kids, at their mm-hmm. house in Austin. And uh, Dusty had property and bulls, and we rode. I didn't. I knew nothing about stuff like this. I'm a Minnesota kid, but we rode the bulls, and you know, this this stuff I had learned. And then then um, they took me in the airport in Dallas on our way to Japan and shaved my head bald. And <laughs> I got over there, and they had a referee cut me when that guy almost killed me, and. And I was going, I got kind of cocky, and I said, this is enough, this is enough, and they just left me in the building. Got in the bus and left me with all the Japanese kids oh, wow. to ride back to the hotel, yeah. So then they made me carry their bags all for three weeks, and Dusty would sit across the aisle for me and sing, Dear John, I hate to write you like my wife writing me a letter saying sure. goodbye, you know. Oh, I could go on forever, but... Um, I just was so mesmerized by him. It drove Vern Gagne crazy that um, he said, this guy is, this is not what you want to do. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. And when we got through... Um, well, and Dusty said in his book that one of the reasons that you looked up to him was probably not so much the wrestling as it was the beer drinking and hill raising and fun, and you were just enamored with the lifestyle, maybe, that he had at the time. When he was with Murdoch, I mean... Oh, yeah, but, I mean, but if you heard him talk, I mean, I, the first time he talked on TV, I went, God, this guy is tremendous. He, yeah. he was totally different than Nick Bockwinkel or Harley or Larry Henning or, or Dick Murdoch. He, he was just, he was on top of it, and it just got better. But, yeah, I mean, we did. We had so much fun. My God, you know, I was just got married, and I was driving 300 miles with those guys to town just to hang out with them when I wasn't even booked. Right. No wonder I didn't, Leslie left me about five times. <laughs> I mean, I just I couldn't Dear get enough John. of the guy. And then I went and bought him, which he alluded to the other day. Um, uh, we went to a country western bar. I'd never been to a country western bar my whole life, right? And I went to a place called Fink, not Fink's, but um, anyway, a real expensive jewelry store in Minneapolis. I didn't have, I had, I bought this gold money clip with a $20 gold piece on it that I did not have the money to pay for, right? And I called him in the bathroom. I said, I want you to know just how much I think you've been. And he, he, he still has it to this day. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he goes, he goes you don't have to do that. I said, yeah, I do. I just wanted to thank you for taking care of me and, you know, helping me become who I'm hopefully going to try and be, you know. And then the Ram and Ricky Rhodes came later and then... But, you know, if he went his way, I went my way, and sure enough, back together, and we made a lot of money, had a lot of fun, made a lot of money, and he's got four beautiful kids, and I I see Teal and Cody and Dustin all the time. I haven't seen Kristen in a year. I'll see her, um, um, actually, I'll see her today. Right. Because we're airing today, today is uh, Dusty's funeral. So I'll see Kristen, and uh, I'm close to the entire family. And he was very close to his kids, and uh, he couldn't have been married to a nicer person than Michelle. I called her the other day, and I said, she was upset. I said, well, you need to know something that's really important that I, a lot of wives I don't think I understand and don't hear enough because it, it doesn't, they, we seem to take you guys for granted. 
I said, Michelle, Dusty loved you like nobody else. He, Dusty knew where to draw the line. Right. You know, I mean, he, he would drink beer and have fun and do all that, but he loved Michelle, and that was that was it. And it was it was it was a special relationship, and they've been together 37 years, and uh, four beautiful kids, and two of them very successful in a business that he loved, as you know. Kristen was a Dallas Cowgirl cheerleader, which he loved. That. I thought that was sure. so cool. That is Not cool. Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. Now she's married with kids and very happy. And Teal lives here in Atlanta, and she's got kids, and so everything's cool. And then, and most recently, he was helping your daughter Ashley. Oh Charlotte, my God, yeah, my Ashley, my, my Ashley is having as hard a time with it as I am. I mean, he just took her under his wing the day that she got to. Uh, Tampa, and then when they moved over to Orlando, he's been with her, mentored her, talked to her, given her just a ton of uh, support and information and helped her with so many different things in life, and just awesome. So it's going to be a long day today, but I know that but I'm really, really happy that he is getting his due and that oh, he's yeah. getting the recognition worldwide that he deserves because he was that big. And you told me that last night I didn't see it at the pay-per-view events, and the company spent a lot of time, you know, that that's, you know, what he deserves. And they, they recognize that, you know, like more than anybody else. They, they um, you know, they know who Dusty was, and Vince will always have a place. And, you know, the funny thing is that you can almost say now, and for nine ninety nine. and I don't, I'm being facetious, of course, but sure. you can see Dusty Road for the rest of your life. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff and on And there's that a lot network. of stuff in it, but I mean, and it's not going to go away anytime soon, and it shouldn't. Well, I and mean, the you, don't, you don't have to go to YouTube. You can find it right there because they will have Dusty Rhodes on that network forever. And that's that's who he is, that's what he deserves. Well, that was uh, that was what we needed to do to start this week's Woo Nation. And we're going to go to commercial. And when we come back, we're going to have a hell of a guest from the old Crockett days. And. Uh, We'll go to commercial for now. All right, man. If it's your boy to go and take a quick trip on Space Mountain, you better be here when I get back. <laughs> 